Hi, this is Sam Downey. This report will feature a talented actor as well as a photographer and creative artist. So let's roll with my report live from Hollywood from Los Angeles in California. My name is René Aubergenois. I'm an actor and a part-time artist, I suppose. People know me mostly from my work on television. Um, years ago, a TV series called Benson, in which I played a character called Clayton Endicott III, and then the TV series Star Trek Deep Space Nine, in which I played a shapeshifter, Odo, and I'm currently doing a show called Boston Legal, in which I play the senior law partner, Paul Lewiston. But I've done a lot of other television and a number of feature films that people know. and uh, Such as? Such as uh, the feature film of MASH. That was my first big film, McCabe and Mrs. Miller. I did a number of films with Robert Altman. And then most recent feature film um, I did was uh, The Patriot with Mel Gibson. And I've done a lot of theater work on Broadway and in regional theater. I was a founding member of the American Conservatory Theater in San Francisco and other repertory companies around the country and a lot of Broadway. Tell me, Ronnie, how long have you been using Apple Macs for? I guess I've been on any computer at all and the only computers I've ever been on are Apple's. I was a complete Luddite and had no idea, uh, no thought about ever getting involved with computers and uh, my wife Judith had um, a little computer that she would type away on. She used it mostly as a word processor, I guess, and and um, I was talking to my friend Howard Hessman one day and we were making plans for the evening and I said, oh, he said, well, where's Judith? I said, yeah, I have to talk to Judith first so we can decide what time we'll go out. We're going to go to a movie or something. And, and I said, she's at a computer class. And he said, oh, what kind of computer do you have? And I said, oh, I don't know. I don't know anything about computers. It has an apple on it. And he said, oh, yeah, it's an apple. I've got an apple. He said, go over to the computer. I'm on the phone talking to him. And I said, yeah. He said, so open it up. I said, I don't even know how to open it. And um, so he said, well, you push the little button there. And, and, and I did. And it opened up. And he said, OK, now, now push that. And he started describing to me how to turn it on. And I very, you know, I said, I don't know if I should be doing this, Howard. He said, go on, go on. It's easy. And, and two and a half hours later, Judith walked in the door. And I'm sitting with my neck crooked holding the phone. And Howard is still talking me through the computer. <laughs> and, and Judith said, what are you doing? Because I had never been near a computer. And then I guess a few weeks later, I, um, I got my first uh, computer, which was a, you know, a G3 desktop and a, and a Wacom tablet. Mostly I wanted it for you know, doing art because I, I'm a cartoonist and I love to draw. For me, the biggest, the first revelation was because I'm not a really trained artist, I have a fear of paper of drawing on really good paper because I think well if I screw up a good piece of paper that's expensive and I can't do that and so I would always just do all my drawings on newsprint or something and which yellows very fast and then the big revelation was that on the computer I could draw and I could erase so I could fix things and I could delete and it just was this incredible freedom and also the fact that I don't look at my hand while I'm drawing on the computer is another big um, freedom. So anyway, that's uh, that's how I got started. I'll tell you the truth, I still look at other computers, whatever the names of other competitive competing computers, and I look at them and I have no idea. They are as, as alien to me as the first time Howard Hessman got me introduced to Apple. Apple is the only computer I've ever known and I'm totally loyal to it. I love my computer. I love my Apple. What software do you use to create your artistic work? Judith, my wife is just always amazed that I can find my way into a computer and solve problems and figure out things without having any idea what I'm doing. I just keep sort of clicking away and going in and looking at something and saying, well, maybe it's in here and fix that. So what kind of... Pro I, I use... Um, Photoshop. But I mean, it was only yesterday I was talking to somebody else and and they said, well, that's in a folder. And then I said, well, in the folder, there's a little thing that looks like a piece of paper with the corner bent over and said, yeah, that's a file. And if you had asked me two days ago, I wouldn't have known the difference between a folder and a file. So 
I'm a, like an idiot savant, I think. But yeah, I use Photoshop, Photoshop CS now, and uh, loving it. So what do you use it for? What sort of things do you create with it? I'm a photographer. It's actually, again, you know, the, the Luddite in me had for years resisted digital cameras. I was doing a show on Broadway a couple of seasons ago, and as an opening night present, Judith bought me a little Canon. But, um, and I, you know, I thought, well, I'll use it like you use a little box camera or something. Before that, I had sh- always used uh, on my Minolta 7000 single lens reflex camera, and I've done some, if I do say so myself, some very beautiful work with photographs mm-hmm. and I've had shows and stuff, but uh, and so I never thought I'd move into digital, but now I am just totally in love with it and totally in love with what I can do on the Mac. I mean, it's like having a dark room. I mean, I worked in a dark room for a number of years and now my dark room is all packed away and put away and I, I don't imagine I'll ever go back into a dark room because once you begin to understand what you can do with the Apple and with the Photoshop it's breathtaking and so I do a lot of photography and I do a lot of um, with my Wacom tablet I do a lot of line drawing and I have a series uh, called Stamp Out Art in which I've scanned rubber stamp images into my computer and I draw off them and make all sorts of cartoons and stuff. (laughs) I'm an actor and I have no uh, shyness about when people say, what do you do? I say, I'm an actor. But, you know, I'm also an artist, but I'm very shy about saying that. I guess because my grandfather was an artist and and a great artist, and my father was a wonderful writer and also a very good artist himself. But they were trained, and my my youngest sister is a wonderful graphic artist and came out of the Art Students League in New York. I do all these wire sculptures. We're sitting here in my studio right now. I do the wire sculptures, and I do my stuff on the computer, and people respond to it very positively, which is incredibly gratifying, but I still have a lot of awkwardness about saying that I'm an artist. I must say, if anything will ever give me the confidence, it'll be this uh, this computer that I'm sitting next to now. Would you ever show off your work as in the gallery, or, or get your, your works uh, published in a, in a book? Um, yeah. Yeah, I'd love to, actually, I would love to publish some of the drawings um, in a little sort of, you know, the kind of books you see when you're, where they have the little books on the counter, the, the, you know, you're, you're buying the book that you came in to get, and then you look at these little books of whatever, postcards, or I'd, I'd like to do that. At Christmas, uh, holidays, I always, I print out, I make cards of my work, and I give them to my family and friends as, uh, you know, the stuff that I do in Photoshop and stuff of my drawings, and I print it on nice Italian paper, and I love doing that. This is a Star Trek question, because Star Trek is obviously set in the future. Right. How did you get on with the technology of Star Trek? Always astonishing to me. You know, when I would go to Star Trek conventions and and people would ask me questions, they would ask me questions about how I do certain things, because my character, of course, anybody who saw the show knows that he was a shapeshifter, and he could become all sorts of different things, and he morphed. Well, of course, that was all done in a computer. Gosh, if I can even remember now, it's getting to be a long time ago, but um, I remember the first season having to go over to some laboratory place, and they put me into a suit, uh, uh, like a skin suit, and they put sensors on different parts of my body, and and they photographed me from all sorts of different angles, so I guess they, so that they could put into the computer, they could put a kind of a 3D image of me yeah. moving around. So then they had that. And then usually when we would work on a on a morphing scene, if I was going to be standing there and as Odo and then morph into a hawk or mm-hmm. something, we would shoot me standing there and then starting the physicalization, the process of turning into a bird, I would actually start acting like a bird and crouch and start waving my arms like a bird and then start 
running down the hallway and then pretend to leap. And it always seemed sort of silly because, of course, I couldn't fly and I looked like somebody <laughs> imitating a chicken or something. Yes. And then, so they would have that piece of film. Sometimes we would have to do it in front of a blue screen in order to, you know, remove the scenery so that they could work more closely. Many times I would have to be, if I were struggling with someone else, they would have a monitor and I could see what they'd shot of the person reacting to me, hitting them or struggling with them, and I would have to watch in the monitor and move. I was in front of a blue screen and I could see myself, but I was sort of like a, a double exposure image and I would sort of fit myself around it and get myself ready and then act it out in front of the monitor. It was very tricky and often, you know, as I said, felt sort of silly. And then, of course, it would become quite seamless and awesome, really. I would sit at home and watch it or see it in a screening room and I would go, oh my God, look at that. Um, and so it was as surprising to me as it was to the audience. How about the, the other technologies in Deep Space Nine, all the, all the computer and screens around which you had to interact with. Right, yeah, well that was all present all the time, humming and thrumming away. They used Apple, brilliant, uh, and they would come in every week and they would put different things up on the monitors and I was always amazed and uh, always very impressive. But I'll tell you one of the things, when I started directing on Star Trek and then would go into the editing room, again they worked on Apple and uh, Avid, using Avid and uh, I had done some editing in the sort of olden days where you worked with a piece of film in your hands and you actually cut it and you really did cut film. And then to see the this, the quantum leaps that had happened in just a couple of years, what I was really impressed by was the, the fact that older guys who had spent all their lives, editors working with film on steam deck tables and, you know, doing the regular old-fashioned way, how easily they had adapted to working on the computer. And doing it digitally. Yeah, digitally, and how much faster it was and how much more flexibility they had and how much more flexibility I had as a director. If I wanted to see five takes, I could just bang them up, one, two, three, and I could watch them run simultaneously to decide where to cut in on a scene, where before that it would have been a very labor-intensive, long process that would have taken all day, and this was taking 15 minutes. How many episodes of Star Trek Deep Space Nine did you direct? I think about eight, eight of them. I think eight of them. Yeah, I, I didn't start directing them until after the after the end of the second season. So it was really only the last five years, and then I directed usually two a season. Did you find it uh, interesting and different? And and was your character in it at the same time? So were you directing yourself as Odo? Oh, they were very um, careful to um, make sure that the the episodes that I directed, I had very little to do. I was usually in them, but usually the the real problem was because of my makeup up took two and a half hours I would have to get in to work at maybe at 4.30 in the morning then the crew would be called at 6.30 and then we would work and for 12, 14 hours and to be in makeup and directing. So usually what they would do, which was wonderful, was they would um, schedule the limited amount of work I would do in each episode. I would usually get in at 4.30 in the morning and shoot my first scene with me in it and then I could peel my you face get off yes. and get out of makeup to get, get out of character and, yeah. and then yeah. carry on tell me about the process you do and how you work and how you create this machine <laughs> and that's that, that's all I almost feel rude <coughs> calling my what is my what is this called a tie book it's just a G4 I'm uh, coveting my daughter's iMac there which is a G5 and I think I'm going to move on to that and give Judith my tie book and the truth is I don't care whether I know about it because as long as the computer does what I want it to do. So this machine sits here on the desk and it sort of throbs here waiting for me to come and work on it. And it, sometimes I really have to resist walking into this room because I walk in and I'm in to do something else, to answer a letter or do something else. And I find myself sort of sitting at the desk and then I glance over and pretty soon I've tapped on the button and I'm, I'm off and then 
you know, a few hours later, I look up and I realize I've been sitting there either drawing or I've pulled up some photographs that I want to work on and in Photoshop. And it's so meditative for me and um, freeing in, in this stressful world. Um, I know the process I use as an actor. Sure. And that's so clear because you get a script and there's work you have to do in order to be prepared to do that work. And then you either in rehearsal process if it's a play or if you're working on the TV show as I'm doing now on Boston Legal. This is a new thing for me because now that I have a portable, I take it to the studio with me and I leave it in my dressing room. And that's dangerous too. And uh, although now it's so funny because I think it's like passing a disease or something on to somebody else because... <laughs> Candice Bergen was passing uh, my dressing room the other day and I had the door open and I was sitting there and she, as she passed she said you're working on the computer and I said yeah and then she came in and like she started seeing some of the work I've done the drawings and the photographs and she's a wonderful photographer herself and she's never done any of that and she just like half an hour later they called us to the set and she was still like awestruck by it. and it amazes me that anyone would be awestruck by what I can do on a computer because I'm, I am as I say sort of innocent about it so I think I've infected someone else and pretty soon you'll see Candace Bergen will have done <laughs> something well, Armin Shimmerman of course who played Quark on Deep Space Nine and is another Apple head or whatever you call us I know what we call Trekkies Trekkies I don't know what you call Apple people but Armin is a much more cerebral serious minded he plays chess on the computer and he's extraordinary but he couldn't do what I do so you know we compliment each other and then uh, Siddig, uh, Alexander Siddig, who played Dr. Bashir, he was a big game player and he was on his Apple playing all sorts of video games. Yeah. Tell me about the internet service provider. You switched from AOL. What can I say about AOL? You know, I'm moving into Faster Mac and uh, finding it uh, very user friendly and they were terrific about helping me set it up. I sound like I'm doing a commercial for these people. It's good. So, what's next for you? Well, as I said, I'm currently in a series called Boss. Boston Legal, which is on Sunday nights on ABC. What character do you play on I Boston? I play one of the senior partners of the law firm, Paul Lewiston. It's a perfect job because the truth is, at my time of life and the point I am in my career, I really like to have the time off to work on my computer and my art. And uh, this does give me a lot of time. My character is not that, you know, needed every day. I am, we did a, a panel at the Museum of Television television and radio a couple of weeks ago and the moderator asked me something about my character and I was sort of thumping around talking about it and then David Kelly the creator of the show chimed in and he said the reason we need this character is because Paul Lewiston is there to remind the audience that this might possibly be a real law firm so Rene could you tell me about the printers and the scanners that you use right yeah I've got a, an HP PhotoSmart uh, 7900 series 7960 specifically and I love it they've been terrific with uh, me and tech support when I started using it because I've been using an Epson before that I didn't quite know how to get in the files and change the sizes and have it print out and I have a um, micro tech which is also great that the guys at uh, Manco they set me up with this whole setup and I'm real happy with it. And um, I'm just beginning to get into scanning in slides and negatives because of all the work that I've done previously in single lens or on film. You know, you asked about process. I talked about the computer sort of with its siren song calling to me whenever I walk into my studio here. Um, I, I have a sort of an approach to work, artwork, which is I was very influenced once by hearing um, a wonderful um, Eskimo artist talk about how he created these beautiful carvings that he made in pieces of soapstone and bone. And um, he said, well, all I do is uncover what is in the stone. I just take away the part of the stone that isn't what is in there. And, uh, you know, I'm the, I'm the kind of person is if someone says, draw me a, a race car, it would look like a child's drawing, you know, because I'm not a trained artist. But I often will just open, in Photoshop, I will just open a blank canvas and start doodling and 
removing and then go up into other places and do some filters on it or adjustments on it and, and it, it, it sort of comes out and it's just the way I do my wire sculptures. I will start with a piece of wire and just bend it and then look at it for a second and it will start taking me on a journey that will then result in something that is hopefully fun or that people that I respond to and that's what that's what the computer has done for me very liberating hi this is Rene Aubergenois Odo on Star Trek Deep Space Nine thanks for dropping by look around it's a terrific sight have fun and come on back <laughs> I did that uh, ages ago. But anyway, yeah, that's um, renefiles.com, R-E-N-E-F-I-L-E-S.com. And the, the front quote on it is, at least now I know how to turn the damn thing on. That was in 1998, so that's the answer to the question. That's how long I've been on a computer. You're also on Boston Legal. Yeah. So remind our listeners when that gets broadcast and where they can watch it. Yeah. Boston Legal, David Kelly's new show, spin-off from The Practice on ABC Sunday nights at 10 o'clock. And it's really an excellent show, really worth seeing. Thank you, Renee. Thank you for speaking to me. Thank you for speaking to Sam Downey. Thanks, Sam. It was great. Thank you.